Here we have a function f which takes in positive integers and we want to know what the function is explicitly because we're only given it as this really weird sum here. It has the property that f of 1 plus f of 2 plus f of 3 and so on up to f of n equals n squared times f of n. And this is supposed to be true for every single positive integer n. And we're told that f of 1 is some constant, which we're just going to call a. And our job is to find an explicit formula for f of n. How do we do this? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to take this equation up here and we're going to replace the n's with n minus 1. So we're going to get f of 1 plus f of 2 and so on, all the way up to f of n minus 1. This thing here is going to be n minus 1 squared times f of n minus 1. OK, cool. And we're going to take the equation that's already in the, in the question here. So just keeping n as n. So we get f of 1 plus f of 2 and so on. That's f of n minus 1 plus f of n. This equals n squared lots of f of n. Great. Now, these two things here, they look awfully similar. In fact, this guy here is the same as this guy here. So we can just substitute that directly in. So n minus 1 squared f of n minus 1 plus f of n equals n squared lots of f of n. Great. This might seem like a bunch of silly algebra, but the great thing about this is now we have an equation with just f of n and f of n minus 1 in. So I can try and build a recurrence relation. In other words, define f of n in terms of f of n minus 1. OK, let's do that. Let's make f of n the subject of this. So let's bring this f of n onto this side. So we get n minus 1 squared f of n minus 1 equals, I've got n squared lots of f of n and I'm subtracting f of n. That's n squared minus 1 lots of f of n. And let's just divide both sides by n squared minus 1. So f of n equals n minus 1 squared f of n minus 1 all over n squared minus 1. And we might be able to simplify this because n squared minus 1, remember, is the same as n minus 1, n plus 1, using the difference of two squares. And then this n minus 1 on the bottom cancels with one of the ones on the top. Lovely. So we've written f of n in terms of f of n minus 1. It's n minus 1 times f of n minus 1 divided by n plus 1. Great. However, this isn't an explicit formula for f of n because, well, it's still written in terms of f. So I need to get rid of that. How do I do that? Well, here's the nice trick. We're going to use this formula in itself. So let me just elaborate on what I mean there. Let me rewrite what I've got so far. So it's n minus 1, f of n minus 1, all over n plus 1. Now what I'm going to do is replace this f of n minus 1. Pause! I've decided to set up my own tutoring company to help you study maths at a top university. So if you like the way I explain things, go check it out. Let's get on with the video. Just using this formula again, but swapping the n's for n minus 1's. So this n minus 1 here is going to stay the same, and so is the n plus 1 on the bottom. But f of n minus 1, according to this formula, so just swapping the n in this formula that I've underlined here with an n minus 1 is the same as n minus 2, f of n minus 2, all divided by, so if the n on the bottom turns into an n minus 1, it's n minus 1 plus 1, which is n. Okay, cool. So f of n is n minus 1, n minus 2, divided by n plus 1 times n, all times f of n minus 2. Okay, you can maybe see where I'm going. I'm now going to use this formula again this thing with a squiggly line, but with n replaced with n minus 2 to help me evaluate this term. So everything else stays the same. So n minus 1, n minus 2 over n plus 1, n times f of n minus 2, which is going to be, if I replace the n's with n minus 2's, I get n minus 3 over n minus 1 times f of n minus 3, and so on and so forth. So this is going to um, I can keep doing this, and you can see on the top I've got n minus 1, n minus 2, n minus 3. That's going to continue all the way down. And on the bottom I've got n plus 1, n, n minus 1. That's also going to continue all the way down. So in a kind of inductive manner, and you can prove this by induction if you want to be maybe a bit more rigorous, uh, this is going to be n minus 1, n minus 2, all the way down to 3 times 2 times 1, all divided by n plus 1, n uh, times n times n minus 1 all the way down to so it's going to be down to 3 here 
So you can notice that, for example, this number here is always two bigger than the number inside the f. So I need to put an f of one here, like so. So f of n is just n minus one times n minus two times blah, 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 down to one, uh, divided by n plus one times n times n minus one times blah, 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 down to three times f of one, which is just a. But as we can see, a bunch of things cancel. This n minus one cancels with that n minus one, the n minus two there, there'll be an n minus two there. And this three cancels with that three. So I'm simply left with two lots of f of one, which is a divided by n, n plus one, like so. So this function f of n does have a nice closed form. It's 2a divided by n times n plus one. A really, really nice problem. I think there's a bunch of ways you could try and tackle it. Um, lots of ways to end, uh, to have a kind of dead end. But the solution actually isn't too bad if you kind of rearrange it in the right way. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day.